Hi again, everybody. Mike Costa with you here on GoAztecs.com, and welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2011 signing day with the Aztec football team, joined by quarterbacks coach Brian Seip, wide receivers coach Charles McDaniels. Gentlemen, I'm sure that this is uh, part of the process where you're actually able to take a step back and maybe breathe a deep sigh of relief knowing that, yes, the Aztecs, the new recruits, recruits, recruits are in the fold. They have signed. A chance, Brian, for you to relax a, a little bit today? Yeah, you bet. Now, you know, <laughs> once that fax machine started heating up this morning, mm -hmm. and, of course, we saw very quickly that not only were we going to get all the commits, uh, but they were, uh, they were anxious to commit. The, the, they came in early. The faxes we needed came in early. We got back on the phone with the kids, and uh, to a man, they were fired up about it. So this is a great day. I, I'd call this payday. Yeah, really, this is payday for us. But, Charles, a sleepless night last night? I mean, normally you've been through these recruiting days and these signing days uh, before in the past. Do you sleep the night before? Actually, I do. You know, <laughs> we, you, know you, you think about, you know, what could happen mm -hmm. in contingencies and you know they're 18 year old kids and some kids they change their mind it happens sure but you know to to rocky and the rest of the staff's credit uh and just as brian stated kids were committed they stayed with their commitments and they see something good happening at san diego state We'll talk about the the transition from uh, the coaching staff last year to the new coaches in just a second. But to that point, Coach, the fact that they're committed to San Diego State has got to make you feel good about the product that is now in place as far as this football team is concerned. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I think, you know, what has been built and the change in attitude, not only on the football field and not only in the college community, but in San Diego in general. Mm -hmm. um, it was such a great feeling for our kids to work hard last year, get some fruit by playing in a bowl game, winning a bowl game in front of a home community. I think it was good for the community also that, you know, hey, and the kids start feeling, yeah, we do belong and we can do better. Mm -hmm. And so our goal, hey, win a Mountain West championship. Why not? Coach Seip, it happened, it, it was really a whirlwind. Uh, former head coach Brady Hoke, who's now the head coach at Michigan, taking that job, uh, taking you know, some of those, those coaches with him. I think you'll admit uh, the fact that the San Diego State acted as fast as they did in naming Rocky Long the head coach. Uh, went a long way to showing the community, to showing the players out there that were being recruited this school is still very, very serious about its academics and about its football program. Well, you've got that exactly right. And since this is a signing day, just the fact that uh, we kept all the, the kids in the fold, uh, there was, and, and I think Charles would probably agree with me, uh, there was almost no hesitation. Uh, it was interesting, though, uh, the, the number of schools and the quality of schools that came back in on some of our recruits. Mm -hmm. Right up until the 11th hour, they were hitting hard on some of our guys. Uh, but they hung in there because I think they saw that uh, what comes after Brady Hoke is as good and can be even better. Uh, so uh, that part of it was pretty seamless. And I, I think the community reacted well uh, to Rocky being signed. You know, he has such a great history in the Mountain West Conference. Mm -hmm. To Aztec fans, they know him all too well. Sure, unfortunately. You know, being the architect of some of those uh, losses right. uh, for us yeah. uh, at New Mexico. And the fact that he's been here the last two years, uh, I think the community recognized that it was the right decision. I think our recruits did. Maybe most importantly, though, our current players uh, are on board working just as hard, if not harder. So uh, I expect great things. Coach McDaniel, did, did, was there any, ever any sense of, of panic within the ranks? Because from an outsider's point, looking in, it seemed like it was, it was, it was seamless. The, the transition, the decision was made, the new head coach was named. And you guys just kept on ticking. Is that a pretty good assessment of what happened? It's a great assessment. Um, the gentlemen that stayed on board, the kids, the kids know how to work. And they went about working, mm -hmm. preparing for spring ball. Coaches, we hit the road, 
trying to talk to the kids that were committed, and they were strong. People went about their business of doing Aztec business. Coach, I'll, uh, Coach Jeff, I'll ask you about some of the recruits. 23 altogether in the fold. Uh, you guys, you look like you're breathing a little easier, which is a good thing. Fine, we'll talk about some of the, the players you're familiar with. Obviously, you're familiar with everybody on the board, but some of the kids I'll ask you about. Uh, first off, Chad Jeffries uh, coming in, uh, maybe the heir apparent at the quarterback position. Well, uh, you know, th- this is an easy one for me to talk about. Sure. Uh, Chad obviously being our one scholarship quarterback this year and, and a real clear uh, uh, choice and decision mm-hmm. for us. Chad um, had a terrific junior year, and, but, but um, we didn't know how, uh, how much in the spotlight he was going to be until we got him to our summer camp. Okay. And at that time, I think he surprised all of us. We knew coming in that he was a good quarterback, but uh, he was the star of that camp. And then we had some great... Uh, uh, Division one college quarterbacks are going to be some of them we're going to we're going to face, mm-hmm. um, but we took a look at all of them and said this is our guy. Um, shortly after that, once we offered him, the, the floodgates opened, and he started hearing from a number of of Pac-10 schools. And, and as I mentioned in the eleventh hour, we still had them uh, chomping at his his heels to try and pry him out of uh, you know Aztec Mesa here. But he saw it. He's a very mobile, uh, athletic quarterback. Uh, we're not going to run the spread. We're not going to change our offense. Mm-hmm. But I think uh, when the fans have a chance to watch him play, maybe see some highlights, uh, they're going to see a guy who can extend plays. This is a term that's getting used a lot now. But it's what do you do when things don't go right? Right. And and he really uh, has the mobility and the athleticism to make things happen uh, when just it does things don't just go according to plan. And that's football. And, uh, you know, it's. A lot of us, as a quarterback, is managing crises. You know, mm-hmm. things just don't go right. Someone who will be called upon to one day protect either Chad or, or Ryan Lindley, Reggie Jones, the the big offensive lineman, local kid out of Mount Miguel. Great kid, great kid. Just the kind of kid you can build a program around. And I love having him here out of the county. Reggie's a big, strong, athletic, uh, mobile guy. And this is this is where we want to go with our offensive line. We 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 uh, took. Uh, uh, three different guys, uh, Smith and Rodriguez, are also uh, big, big athletic tackle types. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Darrell Green, uh, he'll probably play on one of the inside positions. But you're going to see tall kids with big frames already have the weight on them, and uh, not far from being ready to play. Ascending from the CAL lineage, uh, Micah CAL. You talk about a big frame on a freshman, the linebacker out of Bishops. Yeah. Uh, will be up here on the Mesa, hopefully wreaking havoc very soon. Well, I'm especially excited about Micah because uh, I actually had a chance to watch him play as a freshman. He started at Bishops, you know, state championship mm-hmm. last year. Uh, they were always on our schedule when I was coaching over at Santa Fe Christian, and he was special as a freshman. Uh, and, and I knew that uh, they're, they're, this guy would have uh, a big-time future. He got banged up a little bit. Uh, during his sophomore season, had to work his way through a surgery, and I think that's the only reason uh, that we didn't see him get moved uh, by uh, programs all over the country. So we actually lucked out on this one, and this kid could play. Coach McDaniel, two of your prize pupils we certainly hope will be playing on Sundays next year, Vincent yeah. Brown and, and DeMarco Sampson, who set the world on fire the last couple of years, which is a credit to the job you, you did with them. Some new guys, though, in the fold now who possibly one day can attain the goals like Vincent and DeMarco did. Uh, a guy like Paul Pitts. Paul Pitts is the consummate student athlete. Successful on both ends. Mm-hmm. He's a good student um, and a young man who prides himself on working hard, has some athletic ability, um, comes from the area where uh, Vincent Brown's from, and uh, he sees himself as being that type of kid, and he works like Vincent, um, got a good frame on him, has some size to him. Uh, he was the kind of kid that, you know, you will, the Aztec fans are going to enjoy watching. He's going to give you effort. He's going to work uh, to the point where 
he is going to be a good football player here on the Mesa. Certainly hope he's drinking the same water Vincent uh, drank when he was in that same area. Uh, a kid, Anthony Sheffield, I mean, a big guy, already 6'3", 190 pounds, one of those those big body receivers I'm sure you love seeing come on up here to San Diego State. Love big receivers. Uh, Anthony is a big guy that uh, when he grows into that body, he's going to be bigger. Mm -hmm. uh, another kid that he... He is going to uh, be a worker. He's going to grow into being the kind of athlete we believe he can come into. Uh, he'll come here and compete. And that's the good thing about all of these young men that are coming in. They're competitors. And, and staying along with the big-bodied theme, Larry Clark, 6'4", 200 pounds, just a young pup. So there's some growing that's going to go on. I, I really like this young man. Cause he, <laughs> I can't tell by the smile on your face at all. He's he's uh, in the Chaz Schilling's frame. Mm -hmm. He works like Vincent. Oh. He wants to be good, and for a guy his size, he has good feet. He... Uh, he he he's he'll he will come down here and he will work to be as good as he can be and that'll be pretty good. I can tell by the smiles on both your faces. You're you're very happy with this recruiting class and, and I'm sure the process has been long and there's been maybe some sleepless nights or nights where you didn't get a lot of sleep, but uh twenty three pretty good football players in the fold is uh, recruits here at San Diego State. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you. Thank you. Just a reminder, videos of all the recruits can be found right there on GoAztecs.com. Coming up at 1 o'clock, we will talk with the head coach at San Diego State, Rocky Long, get his thoughts on his new recruiting class. And then at 2 o'clock this afternoon, Coach Long's press conference with all of the media here in San Diego talking about the recruiting class. I'm Mike Costa. Thanks for watching. Continuing coverage of Signing Day 2011 right here on GoAztecs.com.